Mindanao in the Philippines. United States Navy fighters and bombers in clashing low-level attacks on Japanese shipping in Mindanao Harbor. Clearing a fiery way for the liberation of the Philippines, 18 ships were sunk, 19 damaged in this raid alone. aircraft tower is blasted. Enemy planes are hit. Japanese airfields on Mindanao and other land installations are plowed up by explosives. Three score Japanese planes destroyed. An early taste of the full fury to be unleashed on the enemy in the Philippines. operations in the Philippines, striking first at Leyte Island, have now been undertaken by the largest ocean-going amphibious force in history, led by Admiral Halsey. Here are General Jonathan Wainwright and some of his men who were captured in the Japanese invasion of the Philippines two and a half years ago. They are still prisoners. Now, fulfilling his pledge to the Filipino people, General Douglas MacArthur has returned, accompanied by overpowering military strength and by every able-bodied man who, under orders, left the Philippines with him. At an American Red Cross packing center, parcels of food for allied prisoners of war in German camps are prepared in large quantities for shipment overseas. Each box contains biscuit, cheese, tinned meats, raisins, cigarettes, and other items, scientifically planned to fill out a healthful diet on the basis of enemy prisoner of war food rations for one week. Soap and vitamin tablets are also included in the standardized 11-pound boxes, which are packed almost entirely by volunteer workers and are sent to French, Dutch, Belgian, Norwegian, Polish, Yugoslav, and Greek prisoners, as well as to Americans. Fully packed, the parcels go by neutral transport to Switzerland, and under international control, are then distributed to allied fighting men in German camps. of Montevideo, Uruguay, completes its 59th year, and President Juan Jose Amatsega arrives for formal ceremonies marking the anniversary. <music> Director of the Academy, Colonel Toscano. <music> President Amatsega. Defense Minister Campos and Army Inspector General LaGuardia. Top ranking cadets are honored. and diplomatic officials of Brazil, the United States, and Great Britain review the Uruguayan Cadet Corps in full dress parade.
triumph of mathematical and mechanical skill is this great new automatic calculator at Harvard University. Intricate problems in mathematics put through the machine in coded form on tape are accurately solved in a minute fraction of the time required for human calculation. Designed to expedite all forms of mathematical and scientific research, the giant mechanical brain will work for the United States Navy until war's end. Mopping up the last pockets of Japanese resistance on Peleliu Island, United States Marines storm enemy pillboxes and concealed gun positions. Stiff fighting along a jungle ridge, a Japanese comes into the open, throws a yard-long grenade before being hit. Gaining the heights, Marines attack enemy posts directly beneath them with bullets, hand grenades, and charges of explosives. is raised over Marine headquarters on Peleliu, stepping stone to the Philippines. In Italy, across the Apennines at Mount Altuzza, come men and arms of the 5th Army to smash the Nazis' highly fortified Gothic line. In conjunction with an 8th Army thrust at its Adriatic end, American tanks and mortars now blast German hillside strongholds in the center. Germans are driven almost entirely out of their fixed defense positions. Tank traps, some over a mile long, cover the area. With the breaking of the Gothic line, the broad Po River Valley now lies ahead. The great French port of Brest, after 46 days of fighting, finally falls to United States troops. Surrender of the Nazi garrison is accepted by General Robertson, commanding the 2nd Infantry Division. Leading his dog, General Ramke, German commandant at Brest, gives himself up. Prisoners are marched off to detention camps. By holding out here at Brest, as in every French port, the Germans gained time for their retreat to the Siegfried Line, but they were foredoomed to failure. Brest was the home base of undersea fleets that once terrorized Atlantic shipping. Now these huge U-boat pens are lost to the Germans. The port of Brest, with the largest anchorage in Europe, was heavily damaged by the fury of battle. 